Hello again, and we're going to quickly talk about SQL aliases now. Now, SQL aliases, there are two kinds. There's the SQL client alias, which some of you will already know and probably love. And there's those of you who don't know, and uh, frankly, I don't want to cover the subject in depth. So what we're going to break it into these two sections. SQL aliases in terms of the client side ones, the ones that used with the client tools to create them, do have some advantages, but their disadvantage is that they cannot be centrally managed and this presents an issue when you have an enterprise organization not to mention the possibility to create duplicate names which can lead to more complex problems further down the line so this video is focused on dns aliases now the dns aliases are reasonably simple but generally people tend to dislike them for one reason the reason being that DNS aliases mean that you need to create a DNS record and people don't always have access to do that. They also require you to create an SPN, which depending on how your organization is structured, you might not have access to the Active Directory to create those SPNs. And this is primarily the argument against them nine times out of 10. Um, frankly, we live in a DevOps world. You guys argue for your permissions, it would be my answer to that one. It's not like you shouldn't have it. Anyway, that aside, this is what you need to do. First of all, you have a SQL server. Second of all, we need a DNS record. Now, currently we don't have a DNS record for it. So before I go ahead and create one, I'm going to quickly prove a point by trying to connect to my alias called MyTest. MyTest, as we can see, doesn't really get very far. Now, I'm going to open up DNS very quickly here do a ns look up for my test and you can see we don't get a response so let's go ahead and create one so my test we put in the ip and please remember this should be an a name record not a c name record those won't work so we've now created it we can now do an ns look up we get a response we go to SQL, and most of you will be thinking, yay, it should work, right? Well, no. The answer is, that's the first part. Now, we need to now tell SQL to associate the A name record that it has with this host, because it says, well, I'm not my test, so why should I allow connections? Someone's trying to spoof me, right? So what we need to do is set an SPN. Now, set SPN in this particular instance is really easy. We have a simple command, set SPN dash S. So in this case, to create the SPN, the MS SQL service, then slash the host name that we've got, in this case, the full FQDN, then the service account, which SQL is running under. Now in this particular instance, SQL is running under the machine account and the machine is called WinDC. And the dollar sign is because it's a machine account, they're usually hidden, so I've added it. Although you don't actually need the dollar sign it will sometimes work it out by itself. Depends on the level of your forest. Anyway, we go ahead and create that. Now, next, we're going to create a second record because SQL is running under a port and we want to associate that port and that service. Uh, I have neglected to delete one which I created earlier, so it's telling me the duplicate. So we'll just pretend that that's working. So we go quickly to the next stage, which is checking, does it connect? Well, the answer is it should. In reality, is it going to? Mm, probably not, because I've got this open for the whole time and I need it to go connect and request a new SPN. So I can do this by quickly cheating and using the push command to successfully kill off all the tickets. That may not be enough. I may also have to do a IP config slash DNS. That's right. Slash DNS.
and now we can see it connects fine. Now, if I was not trying to connect during my demonstration, I would not have needed to flush the DNS beforehand. So just keep that in mind. But as you can see, it now works fine. And under normal circumstances, you wait until your steps are completed before you try to connect and then find out whether you've missed a step. But as you can see, it's realistically quite easy. There's only three steps. And finally, why would you want to even do this? And go, the simple answer is this. Let's pretend over a period of time you want to move a SQL Server. And that might be because it's a physical box or you've run out of the OS is now out of date and you want to upgrade it and move everything associated and you don't want to change the connection string on the 800 applications that are now using it. You can just change it in the DNS and point it to another server like so. That's that's the reason. Hopefully you found this instructive and see you again soon.